Hello everybody, and welcome to episode 12 of my tutorial series for a Dyson Sphere program. I'm Icon, and today, well, if we get lucky, we will install our first interstellar logistics system today. But if not, we're most certainly going to refine some high-strength titanium alloy, and we're going to work on these uh, bad boys here. But I, I have a good feeling about this today. So, in the time between this and the last episode, I have started to wire up another iron deposit to my lab because you see here, here's the first deposit running dry for real. Just, uh, well, the copper does take a little bit longer, but yeah. The other thing that I did there in between was I took the liberty to craft myself some transport connection for the sulfuric acid because we need that stuff now. We need that in large amounts. So I'm going to show you real quick. It's really nothing special. Just wired up a little bit of a conveyor belt between the storage and the logistics station. Pretty nice transporting the stuff over to the other side of the planet without convoluting my factory space with miles long conveyor belts. We, we will have to uh, compactify here a lot in the future, but we'll be getting there. Another thing that I really want to get uh, rid of now are also those uh, wind turbines. They clog up the room there. They are not necessary anymore. We got something better than that. So let's remove them for the time being. And let's head on over here. So yeah, as you can see, we got now on this place the sulfuric acid. Now let's check out the recipe for the titanium alloy. So the titanium alloy again cannot be made in the replicator. Very important to note. You have to do this in a smelting facility. And we are going to have to work with titanium, steel, and sulfuric acid. So there's a lot of different material necessary. Luckily, we got all the stuff we need here. So we will though notice rather sooner than later that our steel production and all that stuff oh it's just a little bit low okay we're going to run into shortages uh pretty soonish but that's okay all right so we're going to whip out the sulfuric acid pressing tab to tell this thing that it's going to be a sulfuric acid exit and uh we're going to do this like that and now let's do some fun let's use this like that. So, as a temporary thing. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I could have just unloaded the uh, content of these boxes and uh, put it into storage facility myself. So as you see here, you need to configure a good before it can be accepted by the logistics station. Very important. So we're going to configure this as storage because I actually don't really plan to ship this around the planet in any way. And if you mark it as storage, as far as I know, nobody will touch it. So we're going to configure another belt for output there. And here we go. We got all the stuff we need. So which direction do I want to work towards to? I think I'm going to work, to work towards the uh, water here. Let's raise that. As you can see here, I'm slowly running uh, out of soil pile. So raising larger amounts of land is at some point no longer possible until you have flattened uh, the planets, uh, planets somewhere. It doesn't even have to come from this planet specifically. There we go. So the rest is just pretty easy now, but it's... At the same time, well, how to put it, the beginning of a longer journey, dear. So, well, let's see. So, this recipe yields four of these dudes per 12 seconds. It's quite a lot. So that means 12 machines would yield four thingies per second. And the common denominator here is the number four. So, we can produce one 
Titanium Alloy in, uh, Ingot per second with four smelters, one Titanium per second, one Steel per second, and two Sulfuric Acid per second. But since I'm not planning to work on any ratio whatsoever, I just wanted to give you that as a food for thought, just so you know. The magic number is four. Okay, now, my plan here is another one. We are just going to wire up two of these smelters here. And after that, we're just going to copy that. And these guys will produce some of the uh, titanium alloy for us. This is all just, a, so to say, a Kickstarter specimen. So we really only want to get the get the ball rolling here, so to say. Therefore, we're just going to produce for yet another storage here. All right, so let's go. So titanium alloy, my friends, that stuff is the material of the future. We are going to need stupendous amounts of that in the and the further passing of the of the game. This is one of the most important materials that we're going to work with in the coming time. Okay, now, tech-wise. The next thing we are lacking are the thrusters. So, I have already taken the liberty to, to research these, but we are going to need now the alloy and five of these maglev devices. But Let's see, we're going to create one of the interstellar logistics stations first. No, two actually. So we're going to need 80 alloy bars and, let's see, 80 particle traps. Those are quite high numbers, but, uh, well, we can't help it. So, sadly, I didn't put any processors on the... On the storage and my goodness oh boy it has been a shortage of power that sucks so we really had much lower production in the first place okay well luckily we are producing these particle containers here in larger amounts i'll start stockpiling a second stack just because you know and uh first things first we gotta we gotta procure a little bit of that titanium, or... Oh, wait a sec, we, I had lots of titanium, never mind. No, we are lacking steel, as a matter of fact. So, as you see here, I am handcrafting a lot again, but... Thing is, I want to get the import of, uh, of titanium rolling as quick as possible. It really bothers me to be uh, still relying on that. And we'll have the opportunity to restructurize our entire facility for good there. Because things will change up now. And I'm not sure how competitive our design here is at the very uh, at the very moment. So once we are done with the things we are doing right now, our next steps will become larger. <laughs> okay. So, check this out. We can actually produce one of these bad boys. Nice. First one. So. And the second one. Okay, so we got this. Nice. Now, let's head on over to the shuttles we're going to need. Logistics vessels. So, we need even more of these processors. But whatever, we're just going to rob the machines from them. It's not as if the drone production was too important here. So, I see a high probability of restructuring the mall in the coming episodes, showing you a setup where we use planetary logistics systems and interplanetary logistics systems. Let's see, I'm not too sure what's going to be happening really for the next episode, because there's just so much stuff that I want to patch up. Okay, so we are going to produce now these uh, reinforced thrusters, and I'm handcrafting so much here out of one simple reason. 
I can't mass produce anything of the materials yet that I really need there. It bothers me tremendously that I'm unable to mass produce those uh, alloy bars. How are they called again? You know what I mean? The reinforced titanium. Titanium alloy. Duh. It really bothers me that I can't handcraft these guys and therefore. So. Ah, that I can't mass produce that stuff. So therefore, we're going to lay low for now. And you'll see our future designs will be a lot more tidy. That's another beautiful thing about using planetary logistics stations. Okay, we are crafting into the pocket now. A couple of uh, logistics vessels there. But we'll need a bit more of these. So, lack of material. So, I got this stuff. I bet I'm lacking processors. So. Basically, the next big step after this is to set up a system which will allow us to... I built these guys. Um, which will allow us to um, mass produce these uh, interplanetary logistics devices. Because this is only the beginning. We, we have to scale this up. Right now we're just uh, carving our way, way out of this problem there. Clawing us out of this uh, situation. So let's see, that's three logistics vessels. As you can see here, I am really aiming on higher numbers there. Because I really want to have as many as possible of these guys before we get on over. Although I think uh, we, we should be fine. I'll craft the next bitch. Oh, bitch. Batch. Batch. Whatever. Gosh. Talking is hard. And uh, then we're going to go on over to the. to Etalupi 1 and uh, have some fun over there. Oh, yeah. There's another thing that I want to check out before we go to Etalupi 1. We're going to research photon frequency conversion. And uh, super magnetic field generators are also necessary. Oh, I had no clue. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to check it out nevertheless. So, dermal, geothermal extraction. Geothermal extraction allows you to transform lava into power. That's pretty awesome. The, the items we need are not that hard to come by. Photon combiners are glass and circuits. And these... Uh, these super magnetic field generators, they are a little bit more complicated, but at the end of the day, that's one of the reasons why we have to restructurize. But I want to have that for the lava planet. But for the time being, well, the lava planet will be powered with wind. I am not willing to put up a solar grid on that now that I now that I came up with a plan to use geothermal power there. But uh, we surely have to set up something bigger there. Okay, I'm excited, guys. I'm really, really excited for this. So, let's see. How many drones do I have? Eight. Well, it's actually more than enough, to be quite honest, but you know me. Alright, so this time we're going to cruise on over just with energetic graphite. You know, it's my usual approach, actually. But I wanted to showcase a more secure method with the uh, with the fuel rods because it took me quite some practice until I uh, was able to get this uh, get this done properly. Okay, but before we set on off to the other planet, let's do one thing. So. I'm going to decide that these materials, well, let's see. I want to place down the uh, interplanetary logistics station already, like from the get-go, you know. So, it's a pretty big thing, size-wise, I mean. All right, 
that's enough. So let's set this baddie up, as you see here. It's the big brother. And uh, we're going to put it down here. Okay. So, empty slot. We're going to set up titanium ingots. We want... Wait a sec. So, we are... Yeah, you can configure them locally and uh, remotely. So the first one is the configuration for the planet, and the second one is the configuration for interplanetary. We want a remote demand. So we're, we could also set this up as a local supply if we'd want to, but as you see here, this thingy also accepts two types of drones. You can set in here the planetary and the interplanetary ones, and con Judging from the fact that these have five slots to work with, they are really just the better version of the uh, smaller ones once you can produce them, that is. Because the uh, material effort is quite huge, let's not lie about that. Alrighty, so let's uh, power this bad boy up. So I just wanted to make sure that this is already done. And uh, what I also want to stress out here, minimum load of drones the other settings here aren't that important, but the minimum load of drones should be, in my humble opinion, always 100% because I, I I, dislike it if we waste that hard. Okay, let's fly on over to Et Etalupi uh, 1 and uh, set this up. Permanent titanium, my friends. So, this is for real the one of the biggest steps uh, forward. Once you have this, you are basically able to set up your intergalactic empire. We are only not able yet to uh, change solar systems because we don't have the warp technology yet. But as a matter of fact, we are now well able to just uh, claim everything in the solar system and bundle it up on one planet. We are going to take a look on the other planets here in the system pretty soon too, but for today, I really just want to get this uh, titanium problem done because it's it's really one big problem, not gonna lie. The thing here is, I would love to produce, by the way, the uh, titanium bars directly or the titanium alloy directly on the volcanic planet, but the volcanic planet has a trouble in producing oil. So all in all, most planets have downsides and advantages. You'll, not, you'll almost never find a planet that has everything at once on it. It's just not happening. So here you see it. Energetic graphite. Your batteries aren't replenishing as fast as uh, they would be with hydrogen fuel rods. But if you, don't if you don't want to go super fast, they're doing the trick just nicely. And if you are struggling with planetary traveling, my best advice there is to save the game before you start, and with more practice it'll get easier and easier. So, we're getting close now. So let's slow on down a bit. Just make sure to hit the planet dead center. And... Halt. Slam dunk! Alright, so... Um, I, can't already, I can't already see my facility up there. Wonderful. So the big issue now there is that we'll we'll not have enough power to get this uh, thing done there. So by the way, somebody uh, thanks to the certain somebody who told me. So you can't just uh, hold the left mouse button and uh, draw these out, just like with the solar panels, just just like that. So, collide with other object. So, it looks like the stones are in the way or what? Well, but you get the idea. If the terrain is not trolling you that hard. Collide with another object, okay. Ah, oh, now, there we go. I think the mistake was... You should not uh, click on this one. You rather have to drag from the first eligible position, isn't it? There. Yeah. Just like with the solar panels. Drag and drop from the first position off.
And whenever there's something red on your cursor, you'll have to abort mission. Because if there's one not working, the AI won't place down any of them. Okay, so we have our miniature wind part here. That sucks. That That's one of the worst ways of producing energy, you know. Especially on a planet that has a lower power generation rate with wind. But, uh, you, you see, I like using wind for these situations. Because, especially now that I know how easy you can set them up in masses. Um, it's going to be super easy to uh, to shut down this thing as soon as we don't need it anymore. And these guys have a constant power output and they just need to be set. So I really do like wind power for these qualities, but I dislike it for just the uh, waste of territory, so to say. I mean, you see, we are, we are just uh, using so much space just for a few megawatts of power. I really don't like that too much, but you know, we are just starting out. Okay, now, usually I would say, if you want to be really, really like a pro, the first time you land on that volcanic planet, you should just go and uh, Consider a starting location where you find titanium and all the other materials that you want to uh, have there and uh, place down your first mining site like that. But, uh, oh, I got to answer that. I'll be right back. Okay, so, to accept a little bit of a package there. Okay, we're going to do two things now. First off, we are going to dismantle these two sorters here because I don't want anything in these boxes anymore. We are going to put these here on like that. And the other thing I'll be doing is we are going to connect it like that. And we are going to put up a output sort of like that. Because I really want to get rid of that junk there. And I don't want that these, uh, these thingies fill up again. No, no. Okay, last thing, we gotta be putting in the drones, and here, it's set on remote supply now, so let's see what'll happen. So, the first, the first package is gone, <laughs> and you see here, there's a little bit of a, of a problem there. The Interstellar Logistics Station would prefer to run with 60 uh, megawatts of power. So the charge up here is uh, just a real slow burn. But it'll work out for now, and we'll set up the volcanic power in no time. So now you can see when you're pressing V, there's this little guy here flying over to Atalupi 3. And that's the beginning of a wonderful story. Now, with that, we are going to be able now to work with titanium on a home planet. And now things are a little bit more complicated for us. As you can see here, the, the power is absolutely an issue. And uh, geothermal extraction. We don't have the necessary materials here on the planet to produce that, but we have the necessary planets in, in ore veins to produce these things. But still, at the same time, we are going to need quite a lot of uh, power there. So let's see how many wind turbines do I still got have. Wonderful. So I'm going to expand my wind park a little bit. And now it's the first time that we are going to work on different uh, planets pretty soon. Because now we can start thinking about what's better being done at the, at that planet and what's be better being done at the other planet. So we got options now, lots of them. The first thing that I want to do though is I want to set up my home planet as sort of a hub for our first expansions there. So got a little bit of achievement because we made it for the first time to transport stuff between planets automatically that is 
and now we have placed down all the wind turbines that we got on ourselves. So it's still only 22.8 megawatt, but well, whatever. I mean, as you see here, our our machines are hungering, so that's the situation we'll we'll have to fix as quick as possible. So let's press V and check out our planet here. So. Etalupi 1 has two things that makes it extremely, well, actually three, makes it extremely attractive. First off, it has natural occurring titanium ore and lots of it. It also has natural occurring silicon ore, which is extremely awesome because you know what kind of efforts we had to take on the other planet. But what's even more important or worthwhile to check out, check out the iron ore and copper ore amounts, 22 million each. And uh, if we get on our home planet, you see, we we don't even have a... You get the idea. So, iron ore, copper ore, this planet is just extremely mineral rich, but it doesn't have oil. So, Etalupi 1 is the ideal planet to be used as sort of a... Um, sort of a mineral heavy uh, site there and let's check out out at a loopy four that's a scarlet ice lake planet i haven't talked about this yet huh so at a loopy four has a really huge titanium deposit also decent silicon deposits but all in all it is a it is the most attractive planet here in the system it's very far away from the home star as you can see here it's the outmost orbit and therefore when you check it out, wind energy ratio sucks, solar energy ratio sucks, and there's nothing on this planet which we can't acquire from our volcanic planet there. So we're most likely not going to interact too much with that planet. The last thing that we got here in our system there is a gas giant. So let's check this guy out there. So gas giants provide hydrogen and deuterium. You already saw that hydrogen is a very desirable material, so we are going to get on there in the future and use gas giant exploitation to get more going there. So I think that's enough for this episode. I'm not entirely sure where I'm headed next, so if the next episode will start on this planet and we're going to set up shop here for real, or if I'll be traveling back to Etalupi 3. I'm not sure about that yet. I can only say we have just uh, solved one of the biggest problems of the early game. The moment you got this automated transportation, you are really, really somewhere else. So I think the next thing that I probably want to do here as well is I want to check out where that uh, silicon deposit is, and if it's only one or more, most likely it's only one or maximum two and we should be definitely transporting that stuff there as well so here 600,000 uh, silicon that's definitely what we are it's the uh, sole deposit and as you see here that's what I've been talking about at the beginning of the episode we could have set up shop here where we got titanium vein silicon vein nice closely together and uh, well now it's just not that good, isn't it? So we could now either dismantle this side and put up another one over there, which would be un not comfy because we have thousands of units of titanium here and already a lot here. So no, we are going to just stay there, mine off the silicon and maybe use a planetary transportation system. But I just wanted to showcase that forethought. The more forethought you can put into your build, the better. But don't overthink things. You notice overthinking when you don't build anything, but only think anymore. So I'll leave it you guys with that. Next episode, we are going to work on out the things that we need for further expansions. I really got to check out the tech tree where the next pressing matter is. We are technically looking at the next big milestone here. That's the information matrix. That would be the next big thing that we have to achieve. They are made out of uh, nanocarbon tubes, uh, carbon nanotubes, I'm sorry, and out of, uh, what's it here, particle broadband wires and uh, processors. So definitely doable, but 
I'll see you guys next episode. Drop me your comments down below, leave me your thumbs up, and of course, consider subscribing. I'd be absolutely delighted to have you. See you soon.